What's going on everyone? It's Kyle here from Azora Hype. I hope you guys are getting hype for Season 7. This is going to be Part 5 of the Vlog and I'm really excited to drop this one. This is Part 1 of the interview we had with Miltos, who plays Serial for Real. So, I hope you're all getting hype and really enjoying the Vlog. Let me know what you would like to see next in the comment section. But this video is going to be our first part interview of Serial for Real. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe for all of the awesome upcoming Season 7 Game of Thrones content. Please enjoy. Where are you from? Uh, Toronto, Canada. Uh, people that really come from far and wide. California. Sioux Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. St. Louis. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> So, yeah, fire away, folks. All right, so we'll, we'll start here and then just go up and down the line as usual. So, you've done so many of these, it's hard to figure out a question that you never heard before. But I guess the, the, big, the, big, the big thing that, that hits me is this is a character who was in maybe like two episodes. Three. Three episodes. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're sure. And that extra inch is very important. Yeah, I know. Often inch is yeah. Like, <laughs> but, but people love this character and obsess over his fate, like, almost to the extent nothing, like, there are theories everywhere about this. Like, what do you, how do you explain this? It, it, it's, it's a phenomenon, really. Like, it's, it's a, such a huge part of the franchise. People want to know what's going on with this. How do you, how do you think about it? I mean, it's true. It's true. It's, it's you know, it's, it's a character that even in the books it has even less than in the TV show. Right. Because in the in the in the in the books, Arya talks about him a lot. You only really see two episodes of them actually together. First lesson, the last lesson. And Dave, David and Dan said, it's too it's too it's too important a character to just have him in episode three and then episode eight kind of need that filler. So they wrote that scene about the God of Death. That was made up, that wasn't in the books. And so that, and, and of course those lines have become synonymous with, with um, you know, the, the faceless men, because of course they believe in that, in that idea of God. That's their whole ethos. Yeah, That's why the, it kind of teased the fans too much, because they went, hang on a minute, in the books he has nothing to do with the face men, and then he goes and says this, which is in the show, which obviously means that they, they're referring to, you know, anyway, so that, that's where that comes from. So you're, you, you've done a lot of images, am I wrong about that? No, you get at least a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah does, so does your kind of intense thinking about the show and your character and the, the connections, or does it come from chatting with a lot of fans, or do you find yourself being like a, an obsessive fan yourself about the books and the show? No, I can't do, I can't do that, because, you know, I'm a bit, I, I am a big fan, and I, and I, you know, that I have opinions about things that I've liked and that I haven't liked so much. Sure. You know, I, for me, King's Landing and Aria's story are the two things that really are the things that I'm most connected to. I think politics and then this, the idea of this girl becoming a, an assassin is, like, fantastically exciting because it's so conflicted because, you, you know, you see the effects of, of what her desire for revenge do. It's not healthy and it's not particularly uh, palatable to watch. But 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 interestingly I didn't think his, it, her story was as interesting last year. Which considering she was in the House of Black and White, I thought there was things that kind of the whole actors thing, the kind of getting stabbed in the stomach and then suddenly being well, I find some of those things I couldn't well, why it's pretty dirty, no? I, I mean I was infection. Well, anyway, so th those things are like, <laughs> so, 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 so deep, and so well, it's so well written. <laughs> Sometimes it, 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 you know, it, it forces you to kind of go, is that really? Um, the, 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 the thing that I think, just going back to this thing about why this character is has stayed in people's heads. Absolutely. Number one, in the books, she keeps hearing his words all the time, and even into the book, the latest book, she still hears his words. So, in a way, it's kind of like, for my money, it's like uh, Star Wars and Obi-Wan Kenobi. It's like you have these unconventional teachers that basically set the protagonists off on their journey. And 
their job literally is just to plant that seed. And that's what Open Mind does in the first start. So it's so, so brilliant. That's why it's difficult to really enjoy the prequels because the beauty about the original trilogy is that that, that mystery, the ambiguity about those, those, those things that we discover at the end, they don't need to be fleshed out because in a way, the, 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 the fact that they're quite elliptical is what makes them so, they, be, they belong to us. We, in the unconventional teacher, whether it's uh, Mr. Miyake, and the, 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 you know, the, the, those people, they're, uh, I, they're, um, they're archetypes. They're always there to teach the, the hero or the heroine set them off on their journey and I think that's probably why he resonates because they you know you can't help it and also with the ambiguity of their disappearance like everyone doesn't quite die because he disappears I have a theory about Syria which is that if they killed him if Ari had seen him and his head squished like a waterman like a there's something so final about that experience, so traumatic, that it, it, it kind of, it, it, it goes somewhere else. It's almost traumatic, it's trauma, it's trauma isn't it? Whereas not knowing allows the character of Syria Pharrell to stay alive in her head. And I think as a, as a, as a, as a way, of, as a, a, a piece of writing technique, just keeps it open. It allows her to carry all of that stuff with her wherever she goes. It's like it's, it becomes a, almost like it's like a false ghost, isn't it? I'm like to think. Right, I was a bit obsessed with Star Wars. But that, 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 that's really fine. <laughs> okay, uh, me. what do you say to the God of Life? Instead of God of death. No, the God of life. What do I say to the God of life? Yes! If you say the God of life, fuckers, <laughs> yes! <laughs> I guess so, that's the kind of God I can say. Yes! More life, more life. Yeah. With all the motherfucker. <laughs> yes, <you're laughs> <that money>. <laughs> <laughs> And if they could see it, 
Tyrion dead, I think it would not have the same resonance to Arya throughout the story. I think that feels like that's the real reason why it's written the way it is. Unless, of course, he's due to uh, probably meet her just at the moment of the end of her story. <laughs> <laughs> So, I, from from what you said, I, I take it that you've watched the show. Yeah, I've um, watched the show. Okay. It's much easier to so, watch when you're not in it. <laughs> so there's the moment where the Hound and Arya are talking, and he says, first sort of, like, he, he totally puts down Syria. What was your response to, or what the, was your reaction to that? And then what would your response be to the Hound if you got to reply? The we've never lived. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's, it's, it's true. And that's kind of the, the beauty of the, I mean, I mean, he's right. The Hound is right. But he's also, uh, he's, he's, it, it's quite true that, that when, you, when you hear that in, in the show, you go, you don't mention those things without, I mean, she actually, in the books, she hasn't had retribution on Meryn Trapp. I like the fact that they're tying up those stories. It keeps, it keeps her revenge story alive. And also, of course, it allows her to, 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 to explain that she, what she's learned is something different to what everyone else does. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good. I mean, I have to say, it's incredibly, I get very excited about those kind of things because I think, yeah, what would I, how would I react? I mean, the, 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 re, the reality is that, you're right, there's loads of swords lying about. It's, it, it, it seems to be um, impossible. In the, in the books, he actually does kill some of them. In the TV show, it feels like he's just knocked them out. So they'll probably come and get them back up. And, and then you've got like six people. Like, okay. It's all hypothetical. Fuck the king. <laughs>